Hello everyone, my name is Jan. I'm a data compression specialist working at Meta. Hi, I'm Nick. Uh, I'm a software engineer on the data compression team here at Meta. My name is Felix. I'm a software engineer on the data compression team at Meta. To answer this question, we have to go back in time, a decade ago when the industry is transitioning towards the cloud. It results in the apparition of new actors which manage staggering amount of data. Now, when you have so much data to store, to transfer, every percent of efficiency matters. And multiple persons can even buy you an entire data center. So it really matters. And in this formula, data compression has a pretty big part to play. Now, there is another requirement. This data is not sitting by, it's active, which means these actors have a lot of data to process every day. And that requires speed. The problem with that is that data compression research was focused in another direction, providing more compression ratio, but at the expense of speed. And as a consequence, cloud applications either use older compression algorithms, which are the only ones to be fast enough for their needs, or even no compression at all when even that is too slow. So that leads us to a first generation of data compression algorithm for the cloud, which deliver on speed, like LZ4. So these algorithms, they are much faster, like an order of magnitude faster, but they compress a bit less. Application which had to give up on compression because it was too slow, that's perfect. It solves our problem. But what about the other applications, the one would accept to have a slower processing uh, with data compression? either get more speed, but in this case, get less compression ratio. It's a tough negotiation to have. In most cases, it becomes a blocking factor. And that leads us directly to this standard. So knowing this situation, the new proposal becomes, what if we offer you a compression algorithm which is as good or a bit better than the ones you already use, but much faster. And it turns out it was a winning formula because now um, there is no trade-off. Switching to this standard, you get benefit on all access simultaneously. Compression ratio, compression speed, decompression speed, they all get improved at the same time. The standard achieves as fast decompression speeds because this wire format was built from the ground up with decompression speed in mind. Most existing compression algorithms were designed in the 90s when CPUs look very different from today where C standard was designed to take full advantage of modern CPUs, which have high instruction level parallelism, deep pipelines, and large data caches. First, Z standard chose a larger window size, which allows better compression ratio at the expense of more memory usage. But this trade-off makes sense for modern CPUs because they have a lot bigger caches and more RAM. Next, Z standard's wire format breaks serial dependencies by splitting its bit streams up into multiple independent segments which allows parallel decoding on a single core through instruction level parallelism. Lastly, it selects its encoding schemes to allow for nearly branch-free decoding because a branch mispredict flushes the entire CPU pipeline, wasting all that work. On the compression side, C standard offers a wide range of compression ratio versus speed trade-offs to fit different use cases, each of which is carefully tuned to run as fast as possible. First, and most importantly, Z standard chooses completely different compression algorithms for different levels, ranging from greedy heuristics at the fastest levels to limited backtracking or even dynamic programming. Next, C standard tunes the memory usage of each algorithm to match their speed profile. So the fastest algorithms will stick to L1 or L2, and the slower algorithms will spill to L3 or even main memory. Lastly, we optimize the memory access pattern, first by avoiding memory lookups whenever possible, and next by parallelizing its cache misses through prefetching to fully saturate the memory subsystem. These optimizations allow Z standard to provide consistently fast decompression speed with a wide range of compression speeds to choose from. We and the open source community have invested a lot of effort into making Z standard available everywhere and able to run on any platform. So it's easy to use Z standard in your application. That might mean integrating it yourself or it might be as simple as enabling an existing integration in the libraries you already use to handle your data. Nick talked about how Z standard can target a wide range of compression speed and ratio trade-offs, but Z standard also has features that let it effectively target a huge range of input sizes. These two axes of configurability make Z standard an almost universal compressor, able to give the best performance in nearly any compression scenario. 
For huge objects, long distance mode can efficiently find matches across gigabytes of data. And for small data, which historically has been a really challenging domain for compressors, because as the data gets smaller, there are fewer and fewer redundancies that the compressor can exploit. Z standard includes a unique ability to train itself on a specific corpus of data. The result of that training, which we call a dictionary, lets Z standard compress small data just as well as large inputs. This has opened a whole new domain of how compressors can be used. And it means applications that want good compression and random access can have both rather than having to choose just one. More broadly, dictionary-based compression has demonstrated that the more the compressor knows about your data, the better we can compress it. This is a promising domain, so we're excited to keep working on it, advancing the state of the art in compression. To learn more about Z Standard, check out the Z Standard repo on GitHub. You can try it too. Z Standard is available on every operating system, so check out the instruction below.